The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. In just a moment, the latest adventure of the Great Gildersleeve. But first, a word about another kind of adventure, an adventure in flavor. For right now, at your grocer's, there's a wonderful new salad oil for use in your homemade dressings, your cooking, your baking. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft-prepared dressings. Now, Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new oil. It's a new kind of oil. Lighter-bodied oil to mix quickly and perfectly with all other ingredients. That's because it's not just refined, it's superfined by a special process created by Kraft. Yes, superfined to put new magic into the salad dressings you make yourself. Into those wonderful chiffon cakes you pride yourself on. Into every home recipe that calls for liquid shortening. Don't wait to get acquainted with Kraft salad oil. Look for the bottle with the beautiful label tomorrow at your grocer's. Get Kraft Salad Oil. On these fine spring mornings, when the great Gildersleeve has nothing much to do, he likes to go out and putter around the yard. He contemplates the flowers, admires the butterflies, inspects the blooms on his apple tree, and marvels at the green, green grass. By George, the place looks great. And about once a year, he takes a look behind the garage. You, my goodness, the place looks terrible. How does trash accumulate? Leroy! Leroy! Yeah, keep raking, Leroy. Seems that everything we don't want gets tossed behind the garage. Tar paper, cardboard boxes, old shoes, shingles. What's under there, Leroy? Is that my hot water bottle? Yeah, but it's split. You sat on it. Yeah, yes. The night of the big freeze. (laughs) Let's see. Where are the matches? Can I light it for you, Unc? Why not? You're a boy scout. Tenderfoot. Uh-oh. You know, what's the matter, Leroy? Go ahead and light it. I just had a horrible thought. Oh? The wind's blowing toward Mr. Bullard's house. You think we ought to burn the tar paper and hot water bottle? <laughs> Put out the match, Leroy. <laughs> yeah, we better not burn it. I remember the day you burned the old tire and Mr. Bullard came roaring over. Yeah, he did at that. You sure were shaking, Unc. Yeah, I was not. I just came out without my sweater. Ah! Leroy... <laughs> Call you when he came over, Unc. Yeah, I don't remember. I do. He called you a big water buffalo. <laughs> well, I didn't want to start trouble. And when you didn't resent that, he called you a nincompoop. Oops. Bullard can't call me that. Leroy, burn the pile. Oh, boy, this is going to be keen. Bullard may not be home anyway. I'm going to light this excelsior so things will start popping fast. Yeah. yeah. Say... That tar paper's going to make a lot of smoke. I say. And the wind's taking all of it right to Mr. Bullard. We'll smoke him out like a bear. <laughs> Leroy, we're not trying to antagonize him. I am. Shh. Shh. There's Bullard on his porch. He even looks like a bear. Is that him? I can't see for the smoke. He's coming across the street. Here we go again. If he calls you a water buffalo, I'll pour it on. Well, he'd better watch it. I've had about enough of him. Ah, dog, this is going to be the biggest battle we ever had. This is the most smoke. Well, I'm standing on my ground. What a hard neighbor to get along with. Good morning, Gildersleeve. Bullard, don't you good morning me. What's the matter, Gildersleeve? Are you upset about something? Well, no. But aren't you? Of course not. For corn's sake, all that tar paper for nothing. <laughs> you mean you don't object to all this smoke drifting over your way? Gildersleeve, you do me an injustice. You speak of me as if I were a crotchety, mean neighbor. Well, aren't you? 
Yeah, I mean... Oh, uh, I'll admit there was a time when you irritated me, but not anymore. I'm in love with all the world. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Mr. Bullard. Glad you're not offended. Yeah, I just thought perhaps this smoking tar paper might annoy you. Oh, no, 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 no. As a matter of fact, Gildersleeve, I came over to tell you I think you're setting a fine example for the neighborhood. Yeah, I am? I like to see the community neat-looking and well-kept. Gildersleeve? Yes, Mr. Bullard? You're a prince of a fellow. Good day. Good day, Mr. Bullard. Did you hear that, Leroy? He called me a prince of a fellow. He sounds more honest when he calls you a nincompoop. Mm. <laughs> you hardly see out the living room window. Look at that smoke pouring across the street. And Bullard over there eating it and saying he likes it. He's so nice to me, I don't trust him. He must be after something. I'll get it! Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. Morning, Gilda. Well, Judge, I didn't expect you. Well, I didn't expect to drop in, but I saw the smoke and thought perhaps the water commissioner was running a railroad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Where do I catch the Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe? Yo, my goodness. The old goat's off his trolley. <laughs> I feel particularly chipper this morning, Gilda. Well, I'm glad somebody does. Why, what's the matter? Yeah, I'm having trouble with Bullard again. Oh? What's he doing to you this time? He's being nice to me. Rumson is being nice to you? That sounds unusually tolerant for him. Yeah, and that's not all. He called me a prince of a fellow. What do you suppose he's up to? Well, he's probably grown weary of bickering, and now he wants to live in harmony with his neighbor. Yeah, I doubt that. The mailed fist has cast aside the sword. Yofer. Now you must clasp his hand in friendship and together raise the olive branch on high. Yeah, don't be silly, Judge. Bullard wouldn't hand me an olive branch. Poison oak, yes. <laughs> Gilda, you underestimate yourself. You and Rumson have every reason to be friends. You're both important men here in Summerfield. We are? Well, yes, we are. Yes, he's an influential man, and you're the water commissioner. Judge, you have a fine analytical mind. Thank you. And, Gilda, you mustn't overlook the human side. The human side? Rumson lives alone, as do I. His heart must cry out for fellowship and a cheery word. I know mine does. <laughs> Yeah, you just got me feeling good. Don't make me cry. Yeah, I don't know why I was suspicious of Bullard. Just because he admitted he likes me. The judge is right. Why shouldn't he like me? Everybody else does. Men, dogs, babies. Women. Say, I wonder what Catherine's doing these days. There's her car in front of the house. Yeah, George, I think I'll stop in. I've been so busy since the twins came, I've hardly seen her. Yeah, I may even take her out tonight. Sure, she'll appreciate it. Nurses get lonely, too. K -k -k Katie, beautiful Katie, you're the only one. Oh, hello. Hello, Catherine. Remember me? Of course. How are you, George? George. <laughs> Just joking, Trockmorton. But I haven't seen you for so long. Uh, come in. Yeah, thank you. Say, you have a nice tan for so early in the season. I've been in the sun a lot. You know, I can tell that. Your tan looks great with that white uniform. <laughs> I hope you've had a pleasant spring. Yeah, Catherine. I realize I've neglected you. But I've been busy with the family and all. Oh, I haven't been neglected. You haven't? Hmm. Gee, woman's pride. She's just dying to have me ask her for a date. Uh, Catherine, guess why the water commissioner dropped in? To read the meter? <laughs> no. 
Oh, Captain, I want to take you out tonight. Sorry, but I have a date tonight. You? It's possible, you know. Yes, I didn't mean that. You're a very beautiful girl, and I haven't been around lately, so... Mm. It is possible. How are the twins, Throckmorton? Yeah, they're fine. Good, Catherine, about tonight. And Marjorie? You, Marjorie? Wonderful. But... Bronco must be awfully proud. Yeah, he is. Catherine, speaking of tonight... How's Bertie? Catherine, stop it. Stop what? You don't really have a date, do you? Well, I'd ask you to come along for proof, but I don't think he'd like it. You... Yeah. Catherine, yeah, I know I can't ask with whom you're going, but what are you going to do? We're going on a boating party late this afternoon. Boating party? Mm Mm-hmm. At Grass Lake. There's a full moon tonight. Should be fun. Oh, yes. Full moon. Well, I won't ask with whom you're going. It's pretty hard to get information out of a nurse. Who could be taking Catherine on a boat? Yeah, it's probably some young intern with a rowboat. Has to be back at the hospital by 8 o'clock. Yeah, I hope. Well, it's no concern of mine. Somebody takes my girl out for a boat ride in the moonlight. I'm not going to worry about it. Uncle, why do you look so worried? Me? You know, just wondering what I should do this afternoon, Marjorie. Well, you haven't seen Miss Milford for a long time. Why don't you call her? Yeah, I... I, 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 Not today, my dear. (laughs) Uncle, you're still not worried about Mr. Bullard, are you? Mr. Bullard? Well, about why he was so nice to you this morning. You know that. Well, as the judge explained, he's a lonely man. Say, I'm not doing anything either. I think I'll run over and invite him to go bowling with me. Why not? Yeah, I'll do it. See you later, Marjorie. Yeah, this is a nice thing to do. Well, it'll appreciate my asking him. Well, there he is, just getting into his car. Bullard! Oh, neighbor! Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Mr. Bullard, how about going bowling with me this evening? Bowling? Yes. After our little talk this morning, I realized I should spend more time with you. You're lonely, no. I am? So how about a little game? Well, thank you, but I have an engagement. You do? Late this afternoon, I'm going boating. Boating? Oh, yes. You do have a boat. I just noticed you have a nice tan, too. <laughs> well, thank you. You've been spending quite a little time on the boat recently, have you? It's been a lovely spring. Oop. <laughs> yeah, I know it's coincidental Did I just talk to a party who's going on a boat this afternoon? Of course, I won't ask with whom you're going Well, it's no secret, Gildersleeve No, it isn't? Well, good I'm going with Miss Milford Oh! <laughs> so that's why you've been so nice to me Well, why shouldn't I be nice to you? You've been nice to me You have? You haven't once interfered with my seeing Catherine You thoughtfully withdrew from the competition I did not. I've just been busy with a little family. Well, I've been busy, too. (laughs) (laughs) Mullard. You've taken this beautifully, Gildersleeve. You're a noble loser. I say, no. Even when he's nice, he's a hard man to like. Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. It's lighter body. It's super fine. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared salad dressing. Yes, there is something new under the sun at your grocer's right now. A new salad oil, Kraft Salad Oil the first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful craft-prepared dressings. Wait till you try it in those wonderful salad dressings you make yourself, those light-as-air chiffon cakes you're so proud of, in all your special recipes that call for liquid shortening. For craft salad oil is more than just a new oil. 
It's a new kind of oil, super fine for better blending by a special new craft process. Because it's lighter bodied, it mixes perfectly with all ingredients, puts new magic into dressings, cooking, and baking. Don't wait. Put this new salad oil on your shopping list right now. Remember, it's lighter bodied. It's super fine. Get Kraft Salad Oil tomorrow at your grocer's. Look for the bottles with the beautiful labels. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. When his neighbor, Rumson Bullard, started being pleasant to him, our crafty water commissioner suspected that something was amiss. He was right. The miss turned out to be his girlfriend, Miss Catherine Milford. That Bullard, grinning at me while he steals my girl. Turncoat. I knew he was up to something. Well, I think I'll stop in Peavy's and cool off with a Coke. Peavy's a good fellow to talk to. He always makes you feel better. Of course, I won't let him know I'm worried. I'll just let him snap me out of it without knowing what he's doing. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Well, I just dropped in for a Coke and a chat, Peavy. Very well. Which do you want first? The Coke is five cents and the chat is free. <laughs> you have the Coke first, Peavy. Very well. What would you like to chat about, Mr. Gildersleeve? You know, nothing in particular. Peavy, a friend of mine is a little concerned about losing his girlfriend. You don't say it. Seems an unscrupulous neighbor has been dating my friend's girl behind his back. My, my. They've been taking boat rides in the moonlight. In fact, they're going boating late this afternoon. What's wrong with that? You wouldn't advise this friend of mine to worry about it, would you? Mr. Gildersleeve, do you want an honest answer, or do you want me to tell you no? Phoebe, I don't want you to tell me anything. I'm just asking for a friend of mine. No. Yeah, all right, Phoebe. I know what you're thinking. You think I'm the person involved. But do you believe for one minute that Catherine Milford would throw me over for a boat ride on Grass Lake? Well, here she comes. You might ask her. Yo, Peavy, drop the subject. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Miss Milford. Well, and Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. What can I do for you, Miss Milford? I'd like some suntan lotion. I'm going boating on Grass Lake. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Mr. Gildersleeve was just telling me about a girlfriend of a friend of his who's going boating on Grass Lake. <laughs> I think he's on to me. Any particular brand of suntan lotion, Miss Milford? Well... Uh, Catherine, have you decided to go boating in the daylight instead of the moonlight? We're doing both, late afternoon and evening. Yeah. This one is a great favorite with the ladies. Very soothing, they tell me. Yeah. Is it a large party, Catherine? Or just a small group? Say two. I think there'll be several couples, Rockmorton. Good. Uh, what about this lotion, Mr. Peavy? Well, a lot of people use it at the beaches. I've seen people patting it on themselves and even patting it on each other. Oop. Woman <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't dare. I'll take a bottle, Mr. Peavy. Here you are. Thank you. Goodbye, Throckmorton. You'll call me sometime, won't you? You bet. You can depend on that, Catherine. A lot of people going boating, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, yes. You can have a lot of fun on those boating parties. Yeah, I guess so. I'm here to tell you. I remember the time a couple of us were fishing alongside a cabin cruiser. Oh? They were having a boat party, too. Long toward dusk, they invited us aboard. They did? We had quite a time. I'd like to do it again. Peavy, you're not suggesting that you and I go fishing this evening. Well, I can't myself, but Floyd likes to wet a line. They say fishing's pretty good if you get in fairly close to Mr. Bullard's boat. Peavy, I wouldn't dream of doing such a thing. In your case, it was different. You didn't even know the people. But if I went out there, it would be planned and premeditated. I couldn't force myself to be that brazen. Well, I wouldn't say that. 
Well, I couldn't. How about it, Floyd? We just sit there fishing, and then pretty soon... Mm, uh -uh. You just want to keep an eye on your girl. You don't need me. Yes, I do. It might look a little pushy if I rode out there alone. Yeah, I mean, be a pal, Floyd. Close up your barbershop, and we can be out there before sundown. I should close up and lose money? Yes, Floyd, look at it this way. It might be time well spent. It might be a good investment. Yeah? How often does Mr. Bullard come in for barber work? Well, not too often. Well, Floyd, if you rub elbows with Bullard socially, he might come in all the time. Hey, that wouldn't be bad, Commish. Yeah, and there'll be others on the boat, friends of his, big spenders. You might get them all coming to your shop. Well, you got an angle there. You bet I have. Actually, it's very nice of me to invite you to the party. Okay, Commish, I'll gamble. <laughs> yeah, boy, Floyd. You'll never regret it. I'll pick you up in half an hour. Good thing I called Floyd and reminded him to dress up. Hi, George. The old white flannels look pretty good. Yeah, some people may think this is going a little far to get on a boat. But I'm not really horning in on Bullard. He horned in on me first. He went behind my back. And I'll slip up behind his boat. <laughs> hey, you sure are dressed up, Unc. Where are you going? Fishing. Fishing? Yep. In those clothes? What do you expect to catch, mermaids? Here's your blue flannel coat, Mr. Gillsleeve, and I sewed on the two white buttons it was missing. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. My, my, don't you look nice. I don't know where you're going, Mr. Gillsleeve, but I bet you have a good time. Yeah. You won't believe this, but he says he's going fishing. Fishing? Yeah, that's right, Bertie. What do you think, Bertie? <laughs> well, when a man puts on his blue flannel coat and his two-tone shoes and his ice cream pants, Bertie don't think he's going fishing. Yes, I am, Bertie. But, Mr. Gillsleeve, when a man goes fishing, he carries a line. Well, I've got that, too. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, brother. This is the life, Floyd. Yeah, I feel like an Indian paddling this canoe. Hey, Commish, ain't we being a little obvious? I'm the only double-breasted blue surge Indian this lake has ever seen. <laughs> well, I'll admit it's a bold move on my part, Floyd. But once they see us from the boat, Bullard will have to invite us aboard. Yeah, or look cheap to his guests. Yeah, of course, once I get aboard, Bullard will realize I've outwitted him. But what can he do about Nothing. it? Nothing. The cinch, you'll have to be nice to you in front of your own girl. <laughs> yeah, not so loud, Floyd. Huh? Voices carry on water. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, the closer you get to that boat, the bigger it looks. Yep. We made it before sundown, too. They can't miss seeing us. Hey, where are them big spenders you were talking about, Commish? Yeah, I don't see any on deck. I hope I didn't close my barber shop just Shh, to wait. Floyd, Floyd. Huh? They must be in the cabin. The lights are on. Yeah. Look, there's somebody at the window, Commish. You where? Ah, oh, now he's gone. I bet it was Bullard giving you the cold shoulder. Well, wait until Catherine sees me. We'll get aboard. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't giving us a tumble. Well, I'm going to attract some attention. Yeah, I don't think they've seen us. Here, Floyd, you take the paddle. Hey, Commissioner, you're not supposed to stand up in a canoe. Yeah, I'm just going to wave as we drift past the portholes. They're bound to see me now. Well, take it easy, Commissioner. You're rocking the boat. I got my best suit on. Lloyd, I know how to handle myself. Look out! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Commissioner, you big clumsy. Yes, now, Lloyd. I... Look, don't get upset. <sighs> Go. I didn't do it on purpose. Oh, I'll pipe down and help me in the canoe. Yeah, it's fine. It's all right, now that we're in the water, let's make the most of it. Huh? They'll have to haul us aboard. <laughs> Yo hoy there! <sighs> Go to sleep. How'd you do? Hello, Mr. Bullard. What are you doing in the water? Diving for pearls? <laughs> no. 
No, our canoe tipped over. Well, hang on to the canoe and I'll toss your rope. Yeah, thank you. Tell him to hurry. My suit's getting tight. <laughs> it looks like we'll have to come aboard and dry off. Don't want to butt into your party. Party? There's no party, Gildersleeve. No party? But, Mr. Bullard, I thought... We were going to have one, but Catherine got a call from the hospital. I postponed it. You just postponed it. Oh, I see. Well, Floyd, shall we write the canoe in bed? Floyd. Floyd. Now, Floyd, put down that paddle. Gildersleeve will be right back. Remember, tomorrow at your grocer's, you can get a wonderful new salad oil for your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil for home use ever offered by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft dressings. Kraft Salad Oil is a lighter-bodied oil, super-fined to blend perfectly with other ingredients. Get a pint or quart bottle tomorrow at your grocer's. Ask for Kraft Salad Oil. Let's... Everybody's had breakfast, Doc. When are you going to get up? Don't bother me, Leroy. I may never get up. He fell on a lake. Oh, poor Uncle Moore. How'd you get that lump on your head? Lloyd batted him with a canoe paddle. <laughs> it all happened because he was worried about his girlfriend. Well, this is the end. Your old uncle has made a fool of himself for the last time. I'm never going to look at another woman as long as I live. Ah, boy, Unc. Yeah, I learned my lesson. I'm putting a woman out of my life forever. I came up to tell you Miss Milford phoned. Catherine? She's on her way over to see you. She is? Where are my clothes? Give me a clean shirt. What a sweet girl. What a quick change. What a character. Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Gail Gordon, Kathy Lewis, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a thrifty secret for making economy meals come to life. Next time you serve cold meat, sandwiches, or leftovers, don't forget the mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Every bite tastes better. And the mustard to add is Kraft's prepared mustard. There are two kinds, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. And remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Don't miss the Falcon each Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves The Case of the Curious Cop. Laugh with Groucho. He's next on...